Welcome, my name is Rebecca Eifler and today I would like to present joint work with Valentin Seimetz and Jörg Hoffmann about learning temporal plant preferences from examples, an empirical study. Last year we introduced a framework which uses properties or preferences to generate explanations. One drawback of the framework was that the properties need to be given as an input by the user. Here we now want to investigate if it's possible to generate these properties or preferences automatically. We are using the following setting. We have user and an oversubscription planning task. The user has some preference in mind, but isn't able to define it specifically. But he's able to identify whether a plan satisfies his preference or not. Given this setup, we learn temporal plan preferences the following way. First, we generate example plans for the given planning task. And then we ask the user to annotate them with respect to his preference. In the third step, we use an LTL learner to learn an LTL formula which identifies the input plan example. This formula then hopefully resembles the user's preference. In our setup, an oversubscription planning task is defined as follows. It consists of a set of variables and actions an action cost function, an initial state, a set of hard goals, an overall cost bound, and a set of soft goals. A plan for such a planning task is an action sequence which satisfies the overall cost bound and reaches the hard goals. Next, I would like to introduce previous work which we use in our learning setup. First, the plan generation. We need multiple plans which should be diverse but don't have to be optimal. We explore four different generation techniques. Three of them are variants of top K planning, which is designed to generate multiple plans. We use the top K planner, which computes the top K plans with respect to the cost. But as there are often permutations of each other, we also include a top K planner with a filter, which filters out these permutations. As a third variant, we use an agile diverse planner which is specifically designed to generate multiple diverse plans. The fourth planner is a randomized version of HFF with greedy best first search. There also exists prior work for learning of temporal preferences in a planning setting. One work by Kim et al. uses probabilistic Bayesian models but relies on LTL templates. Another approach is based on SAT encoding and can learn arbitrary LTL formulas. Therefore, we chose the second approach. This works as follows. You encode the positive and negative examples and the LTL formula of a given size into a SAT problem. And if this problem is solvable, then the satisfying assignment can be used to reconstruct the formula which perfectly identifies the input example. If that SAT problem is not solvable, then you increase the size of the formula. In the following, we focus on plant preferences, which are either used in PDDL3 or are commonly used preferences in model checking. In the next section, I want to focus on specific constraints we have to deal with in every step of our learning procedure. First of all, the planners, which generate the example plans, don't know the target formula and cannot tailor the plans to the target formula. Therefore, we simply select the first n plans the planner generates. An additional constraint we have to keep in mind is that for the learning phase it's necessary that we have at least one positive and one negative example. For the annotation step there is not directly a hard constraint, but we definitely don't want to overwhelm the user with too many plans he has to annotate. So one question we want to answer in the following evaluation is how many plans do we actually need to learn the target formula in the learning step? The LTL learner does not only produce one result, but the set of smallest LTL formulas which perfectly identify the input examples. As we don't know anything about the target formula, it's not possible to decide which of the formulas it's more likely to reflect the user's preference, and therefore we give all of them to the user. The target formula and the learned formula can have different relations to each other. They can be the same or they can be equivalent given the oversubscription planning task. Or the learned formula is an overapproximation of the target formula or the other way around. 
Or it can also be the case that there is no direct relation between the learned and the target formula. The optimal case is when the learned and the target formula are the same, that's clear. And in the worst case, they have no relation at all. But in between, it's more difficult to decide whether the learned formula is useful. You might think if they are equivalent, that's great. But you have to keep in mind that they are equivalent given the planning task and can look completely different and the user might not be able to identify the equivalence. Now I want to describe in more detail how we evaluated the approach. We didn't use real users, but instead we simulated them with a hidden target formula. To generate the benchmark set, we used four domains, Bloxworld, New Mystery, Rover and TTP, each with 10 instances. To generate hidden target formulas, we used the preferences in PDTL3 and the preferences commonly used in model checking as templates. We instantiated these templates with facts, which are changed in the planning task. This gave us candidate formulas. Then for each of these candidates, we checked if in a corresponding planning task, there exists a plan which satisfies the preference and a plan which doesn't satisfy the preference. If this was the case, we added the formula task pair to our benchmark. The planner isn't aware of the target formula and so might generate very uneven sets of example plans. Yet intuitively it is important that the sets are balanced as they might otherwise not be able to clarify the distinction between all positive and all negative examples for a given preference. Therefore, we also included an idealized setup where in contrast to the application setup, the planner knows the target formula and can generate balanced plans of positive and negative examples. To evaluate how good the learned formulas are, we identified the relation of each learned formula to the corresponding target formula. To check, for example, whether the learned formula implies the target formula, we extend the hard goals with the learned formula and negate the target formula and check if the resulting planning task is solvable. If it's not, we know that the learned formula is an over approximation of the target formula. Now let's get to the results. So first of all, we want to analyze the quality of the learned formulas. Here, each of the four bars corresponds to one of the four plan generation algorithms. On the x-axis, we have the size of the target formula and on the y-axis, the relative number of instances per category. Black corresponds to the instances where the planner only generated either positive or negative examples and so we couldn't even try to learn the formula. For small formulas of size 2 and 3, we can almost always learn the same formula and for larger formulas, we can either learn an equivalent one or at least an over or under approximation. Now let's take a look at the same evaluation for the idealized setup. Here you can see that for small formulas we can always learn the same formula and for larger ones we often learn equivalent ones or almost always an under or over approximation. If you compare the two results you can clearly see that the bottleneck of the approach is the fact that in many cases the planner aren't able to generate positive and negative examples. Here we analyze the number of plans necessary to either learn the same or an equivalent formula for the idealized setup. Overall, the random plan generation performs best. And on average, the number of plans necessary to learn the same or an equivalent formula is below 10, which should be a feasible number for the user to annotate. To conclude, we assembled a technology which can be used to learn user preferences from annotated plan examples and we showed that the results are encouraging. The biggest bottleneck is the performance gap between the application and the idealized setup. In the future, we want to try to close this gap by introducing additional information from the user to the plan generation step. This additional information could, for example, include which objects or predicates the user is interested in, or if he only wants to look at preferences which reflect an ordering, for example. Thank you for listening. I hope you find our work interesting and I'm happy to answer any of your questions